I just gotta talk about something that uh, it's really uh, personal. It is and it isn't. So today, when I was at the grocery store, I saw this dude who was obviously a burn victim, and I smiled at him. And when I tell you that the smile that I received was like the warmest, most genuine smile I've ever received. Like, <laughs> it like, oh, it like makes me like tear up because it's just like, most people would probably look away immediately, right? Most people. And I, I used to be one of those people because like it really fucks me up whenever I see a perfect victim because yeah, that's just such a horrible thing. Like to, to, to see like somebody's like horrible experience that, that they have to remember every time they look in the mirror, you know? But at the same time, it's like, it's so like amazing and profound that they like live through that. And, um, I don't know. It's just kind of deep. You know, I was having really deep thoughts, like approaching the coconut water. I was having really fucking deep thoughts. It's like so weird, like how it's just, you feel like you have this revelation about the whole like human experience and, and just how amazing life is, how amazing and horrible and Oh no, the humanity, the humanity and the severity of, you know, living in this world and like what it does to you and so much, so much to unpackage. But, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I just really felt something when he smiled at me because like, <laughs> like just thinking about that, like, that his whole experience and how horrible that must have been. Like that people are so afraid of that. They're so afraid to just look at that. That <laughs> it's like they're scared of it. You know? <sighs> this is not a bad thing. What's happening right now, it's not a bad thing. It's a very, very positive thing and an extremely misunderstood thing because when you're able to like see somebody else's humanity, it just fucking tears you apart. <laughs> but it's okay, because that's good, you know? I was thinking about like, um, the reason why I'm so fascinated and um, definitely obsessive about studying people and studying like the human experience I, I could just say human experience rather than mental illness. Noted. We are going to say that from now on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's just superhuman. It is superhuman. And because it's superhuman, it's like your emotions are supercharged, your uh, thoughts are supercharged, and your, your energy can be really positive or really negative, you know? Like, the dude that I work with that I was bitching about earlier, like, he's obviously, like, a vulnerable narcissist or whatever, like, people pleaser. And I was just thinking about that. I was thinking about all the people in my life that would definitely fall into this category. And I was thinking about myself and how, you know, I, I sort of, like, I don't want to say I overcame borderline personality and just chose to become a schizophrenic, but, I mean, I feel like all this stuff you know, it fluctuates, which is why I think the whole thing is a spectrum. <laughs> That's probably the only thing that I agree with. And like the whole mental health community, they, they talk spectrum, you know, but that's really the only thing I agree with because it really is just a, um, a long ass line. And that's why people quite often say, well, everyone's a little crazy that just means that they're in 
Um, are we going this way? I don't, I don't know which way we're going. It really doesn't matter, dude. Nashville's a circle. You get there no matter what. You're always gonna be late, so fuck it. <laughs> yeah, um... But anyway, um... What was I talking about? Borderline personality disorder is like the flip side of narcissism in a way. Like, they overlap, okay? So... Well, actually, no. I take that back. Borderline... It's the borderline of psychosis, okay? So basically, I'm sorry, I keep turning the lights on and off. You see, there are lights outside. That's why I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. Let's turn it back on. <laughs> see, you'll see it in a second. You'll see it in a second. There they are. There's some lighting. Thank you very much. I don't have to waste my car battery. But, uh... So, the borderline of psychosis. Let's talk about psychosis. What is it? What's psychosis? Do y'all know what that is? It's not knowing the truth from the false, right? Well, this is why I say what I say about mental illness, i.e., what did we say? Human experience, or we could say spiritual experience as well. Because if you're uh, knowledgeable of the spirit, the, the noose, that's the soul in Latin, I believe, if you're familiar with that, then people are going to say you're crazy. And, you know, if you're, if you got religious people that are trying to control, like, what goes on at the church, anybody that understands that experience is going to be a threat to the authority figures in that church. Um, same with, you know, all the people that are trying to control the thoughts that go into your head. Um, people that are trying to, um, control your behaviors and it is about money but it's more about power and control if they have power and control they have money um, like I've said m multiple times I'll just keep saying it you know you keep validating people you don't have to give them money you might as well because that means a lot more to them than cash you know But uh, anyway, yeah, so when I was in relationships, I was most definitely a borderline personality um, because I was really possessive. And um, it's, uh, it's like you can go one of two ways with borderline. So you can either allow it to make you feel like a victim all the time and you take everything personally so there's a very narcissistic element of borderline personality, okay? Um, but the smarter ones, the more introverted ones, the, what they call quiet borderlines, shh, okay? Um, the quiet borderlines will increase in their empathy and they will not be so easily damaged by these things that used to do a number on them before. Um, because they have self-awareness. And with self-awareness comes world awareness. And when you have world awareness, that's that's the best position to be in because you don't take anything personally, okay? Um, now, if it seems like I take stuff personally, y'all already know. I thrive in solitude. And sometimes it really does disheart me. Because there is a teeny tiny little fragment of me that's like listening to the cure and <laughs> you know? Or like, you know, crappy love songs. Like y'all know I was listening to Billy Joel recently. I think the motherfucker had what, like five marriages, but he could write a really, really good love song. So That's got to count for more than a lasting marriage. 